All right then, gang, so as we saw in the last video, view components look a little bit different when we're working with TypeScript. First of all, this script has a lang attribute of TypeScript, or TS, telling view we're using TypeScript, not JavaScript. Then, the way we're actually creating the component right here, this object, is different too. We're using something called define component to make it. So, whenever we create a new component using TypeScript, we generally make it this way. The rest of the component, the way we make the template and also the styles as well, that is exactly the same. So let's try working with TypeScript inside our component. Now to begin with, in this lesson, I'll be using the Options API, but in every lesson thereafter, I'm going to be using the Composition API. So let's start by adding a bit of data. So let's create this data function which returns an object where we can place our data. Now I'm just going to create a name property which will be a string. Now when we're using basic built-in types like strings, numbers, booleans, etc, these types will be inferred by TypeScript automatically so we don't need to specify the type explicitly. TypeScript is going to see this and infer its type as a string and that means that this data property must always be a string from this point on. So let's try using this in the template. Let's go up to the template and we're going to create, instead of this, a paragraph tag where we're going to output the name. So if I save this, I'm going to preview this in a browser, we can see a link over here. So everything is working. All right then, so what if we want to change this value at some point? Well, let's create a method to do this. So below data, I'm going to create the methods property. And inside here, we can create a function which is going to change the name. So I'm going to call this change name like so. All right, so this is going to take in an argument. And this argument is going to be the new name that we want to change it to. Now, notice straight away, we get some kind of warning or error right here. If we hover over it, it says name is declared, but its value is never read. And also, parameter name implicitly has an any type. So that is TypeScript saying, look, you're not specifying the type that this should be. Well, we always want it to be a string, right? So we'll say string right here. And now the error goes away. So what we're doing is typing the argument. So now only a string can be passed in as the name. We don't want a number to be passed in because we can't update this to be a number. So inside here now, I'm just going to say this dot name, and that means grab the property name for this component. And I want to set it equal to the name we take in this argument right here. So that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. Now, what if we specified this to be a number right here. Well, this is fine, but now notice we get an error right here. And if we hover over that, it says type number is not assignable to type string. So this is what I was talking about a minute ago. TypeScript inferred this type to be a string and we cannot then change it into a number in the future. TypeScript doesn't allow us to do that. So it must always be a string. And because this function knows that this is going to be a number, it's giving us this error right here to say, look, we can't do this. We can't update the name with whatever number is coming in here. So this must be string. All right, cool. So let's try adding this in the template as well. We'll do a button so that when a user clicks on the button, it changes the name and we're going to pass in an argument. So button, first of all, and we'll say change name inside that button and we'll attach a click event to the button. And that is going to be equal to some kind of function. That function is change name. So we're going to invoke that function. We also want to pass in an argument. So parentheses. Now, if we try to pass in a new name, for example, Zelda like that, it's absolutely fine because this is a string. The function accepts a string. If we try to pass in a number, then we're going to get an error again. And if we hover over this, it says argument type number is not assignable to parameter of type string. So it's saying, look, we're accepting this parameter, which is a string and you're trying to pass in a number. So this has to be a string. So this is just one of the ways that using TypeScript is benefiting us in this instance. It's telling us before we even preview our code in the browser that something is wrong. So let's change this back to Zelda and see if this works. I'm going to go to the browser, change name, and yes, it works. All right then, so let's try another example. I'm going to add in another property called age, and this is going to be, say, 25. 
Now, in this instance, I want the age to be a number. However, I also want to allow the age property to be a string in the future if we change it as well, not just a number. Now, if I left it like this, TypeScript would infer this to be just a number and never allow us to change it to a string. So, we want to explicitly type this property to be a number or string. How do we do that? Well, normally in TypeScript, when we type something, we would say, okay, here's a variable. I'm going to call it age, and then I would do a colon and then say the type. So if I wanted this to be a number, then I'd type it to be a number and then set the value, for example, 25. If I wanted it to be a string, then this would be string. Now you can see we get an error over here because this is not a string, so it would have to be a string. So 25 in quotes, for example. Now, if I wanted this to be a string or a number, then I would use a union type, which is just two types next to each other with a pipe symbol in between. So string or number, essentially. So now if this is a string, it's fine. And now if this is a number, it's fine. But inside the data object right here, we can't use this kind of syntax to type it because this is a data property and not a variable like this. So how do we do it inside the data object right here? Well, we can use something called type assertion, otherwise known as type casting. And this is a way that we can explicitly tell view that a property will be of a certain type. So we could define an initial value like this and then say as and number pipe string so a union type right here meaning it can be either a number or a string so in the future now we're saying this can be a number as it is or we can change it to a string so this is how we type things inside the data object right here we use type assertion using the as keyword okay all right then so let's output that in the template up here i'm going to do a dash and then output the age as well and save it oops we need curly braces there not square brackets Save that, and now we can see 25. Change name still works. I also want to create a function to change the age as well, so let's do that down here. So change age, and inside here, we're going to take in the age argument, but remember, this could be two different types. Now, it could be a string or a number. Now, you could have it as just number to update it. That would be absolutely fine, and it's not going to give you any kind of errors because this can be a number. We don't have to specify here the argument must be a number or a string. As long as it is one of these, it doesn't matter. So inside here, I could say this dot age is equal to the age parameter right here. And there's no errors likewise i could change this to string and there's no errors this all works fine i'm going to pass in the union type to say string and a number so it can be either one of these and again there's no error however if i added on something like a boolean as well then there is going to be an error and if we hover over this it says type string number boolean is not assignable to type string number so we have to take this off all right then, so that is the function. Let's try using it. I'm gonna duplicate this button and I'm going to change this to age. And now inside here, I'm gonna change this to 30. And we get an error. That's because the function needs updating as well. This should be change age. All right then, so this obviously works. There's no error there. If we save it and try it, change age, it works. Now, if I change this to a string, 35 for example, and save this, then it's still going to work because this can be a string or a number. If I change this to something else like a boolean, then we get an error right here. All right then, cool. So let's go back and change this to 30. Now, one more thing to do with these functions before we move on. I'm just going to return the name value right here and also return age just so I can show you that TypeScript automatically infers the return value of these functions as well. So if we hover over this, you can see to the right of the function over here, it says string. And that is TypeScript telling us, look, this is always gonna return a string, this function. If we hover over this one, we can see to the right of the function, if we hover over this, string or number. So it knows this is always gonna be a string or number. All right then, so now we've seen how to use TypeScript a little bit inside view components using the options API. Next up, I wanna move on to using it with the composition API.